Learning how to make concept art is more than just painting pretty images. When I got my first job in the game industry, I really quickly realized that actually most of the hard work is this skill that I had not been taught. It's not just drawing, it's problem solving. You're working within a tricky set of limitations, but you're still coming up with something that looks really cool. And if you're not employed as an artist, I feel like these are actually really hard skills to learn. So one day I thought to myself, you know what the internet needs? A boss. They need tricky assignments to solve, they need unexpected curveballs, and to be forced to work in genres that aren't their personal comfort zone. Because by being put in this position, you just naturally learn these skills that you wouldn't on your own. So with that goal in mind, welcome to episode one of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Because I really want to get you thinking about the design side of concept art. And hopefully the structure of these videos will give you a fun way to get started. Now when you're watching these videos, I expect that you're familiar with the video game elements. I won't be pausing to define terms like HP, defense, or loot. I also expect that you're willing to tackle both written and drawn assignments. That said, you don't need to be an expert at drawing or using graphic software. If I showed you any of these five images, you would be able to identify the NASA space shuttle. That's the design part. Even though these happen to be depicted with different media and different quality, the skills we're learning in this series relate to the ideas and the function, not the rendering style. By completing the series, you'll learn a better understanding of the concept art job, you'll learn ways to generate ideas, strategy for tackling art assignments, and ways to revise and improve your artwork. You won't be learning about advanced drawing and painting skills. If you want to bulk up on these techniques, I encourage you to check out the Control Paint free library and the Control Paint store. But honestly, there are so many tutorials online about painting technique. I'm really excited to focus on the thinking and problem solving aspects of concept art. Which raises an important question. What is concept art? In short, it's the art that helps develop visual ideas in games and movies. Concept artists don't make the graphics that the players see in the game. They create blueprints and sketches that pave the way for that final art. It's really easy to see an illustration like this one by Dufresh and confuse it with concept art. This is an illustration. It's a piece of marketing art where the artist was given existing ship designs and they made a really compelling image out of it. Now, it's a beautiful piece, but this is not the sort of artwork that we're talking about. This sketch, however, is from the exact same game and it is concept art. This image isn't about making a cinematic composition. It was created in the process of deciding how the ships need to look in the first place. Now, concept art takes many forms. We are really used to seeing the polished work on the front page of ArtStation, but just as commonly, concept artists make paintovers. Here, this is an example where I was working on the game Smite, and I started with the screenshot from an in-progress level on the left here. And my task was just adding a little bit of light and texture and then handing it back to the level artists. So I just gave a little bit of guidance. Another common form is idea sketching, where early experiments are done as loosely as possible. Sometimes these ideas are then further developed into a full concept painting. Or instead, once an idea is developed, concept artists could make diagrams like these ones. These are almost like instruction manuals for the art team. So these types and many more all share an unfinished aspect. Concept art is about facilitating the team and facilitating a final product, not making the visuals that are actually seen by the player. Now each of these challenges has three parts. A brief, a demo where I teach a specific new skill, and finally, I'll introduce your homework. And though I do think the demo is important, you are going to learn these skills best by doing, not by watching. Which is why for each of these videos, Ryan actually created a second brief that's reserved for your homework. So after each demo, I'll reveal that second brief and then send you off on your way. And even though I'm going to be representing Ryan with this cute little green icon, he's actually a real guy. He has worked on the Halo and Star Wars games. I met him while working on Marvel's Iron Man VR. And he's just a super smart, nice guy. In a game studio, though, there's this division of labor. So you'll hear me saying designers. And what I mean by that is this group of people that invent the fun part of a game. They think of the rules, they create how all of these characters interact with each other. 
and they don't really do much drawing. They do more spreadsheets. Now, part of their job involves creating written assignments that they give to us, the artists, and those are called briefs. So starting at this moment, we are pretending to be in a fake game studio. You're a concept artist, I'm a concept artist, and Ryan represents what we'll call the designers or the design team. In each of these videos, I will demonstrate how to approach the current challenge. And I should mention, these designs are not random. Before Ryan created these briefs, I mapped out a sequence of, I guess what I would call crucial design skills that I wanted to teach you. Stuff I've used over my career working in the game industry. So hidden in each of these props, monsters, and weapons that you're going to be designing is a specific job skill that I find myself constantly referencing. Now, when we look at today's brief, it's really pretty bare. So let's read it out here. It's a first-person shooter genre. That's totally straightforward. Has low health. It can climb on walls and on ceilings. And then here it supports both melee and ranged combat. So it has to be able to do something scary up close, but also be able to shoot something at you from a distance. At this point in the video, normally I'd be launching into a new skill to demonstrate. This assignment here is actually intentionally vague. By tackling it without any direction, it's going to give you a really good snapshot of where you're at at this moment. All the remaining challenges are much more specific. And so by the end of these 30 challenges, this first homework you're doing today is going to provide a great before and after for you to see your own progress. After some time working, this is my spider drone. It's a few different views of the enemy. There's a full body drawing, there's a front view, and because there's really so much overlap happening between the legs and the body, I've also included a side view of the body, as well as a dedicated drawing of a single leg. Now, I could include more, but this seemed like enough to clarify the major elements. Now, but you probably noticed that this video didn't include my drawing process. That's on purpose. I like to think of concept art as two different activities. There's planning and there's executing. Planning has you outlining, sketching, thinking, and problem solving. And then when you're happy with a direction, then you shift to execution. And that's the part you might be thinking more about. Drawing, painting, rendering. Now, in my experience, the more time you dedicate to planning leads to better, faster, and more compelling artwork. So these videos focus on the planning phase. And generally speaking, they're going to skip the drawing phase. Now, if you want more help with drawing and painting, I encourage you to check out my other free tutorials. But here's the important part. Once I have my assignment finished, how do I know if it was successful? I might like the way it looks, I might not like the way it looks, but what we need is a more measurable criteria. And luckily we have one, the brief. Will this work for a first person shooter? Yes. This shape is simple enough that it'll read clearly at a distance, and up close we're still going to see plenty of interesting details. Does this drone appear to have low health? Well, the best way that I can guarantee this is to indicate scale. And once we see that this drone is actually relatively small, then we know it would be fragile in-game. Can it climb on walls? Totally. Because it's clearly spider-shaped, the audience will just expect that it can climb on walls. Does it offer both ranged and melee attacks? Yes, and this was probably the most challenging area of the design, because the other aspects naturally map onto what we know about spiders. But in the real world, spiders don't shoot projectiles. And that's where design comes into play. So I chose to create a large, visible gun turret on the abdomen. And I made it large and obvious to help reinforce this otherwise unspider-like quality. With that, I've met all the criteria on the brief. And I'm happy with the way it looks, so it's a success. And the same can be true for your homework. No matter how inexperienced you may be with concept art, the text in the brief give you a measurable criteria for success. So with that, let's take a look at the brief that Ryan created for you. Today, your brief is a brute for a third-person brawler game. It should present a medium level of difficulty for the player. It carries a melee weapon, and it's about twice as large as the player character. A copy of this homework is available as a PDF. Just follow the link below. But this homework gives you a great opportunity to follow your instincts and just react to a bare-bones brief. Have fun, and when you're done, I'll see you in the next assignment.